Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. It's another episode of the Daily Crypto News, which is always myself, Bob, and got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, a.k.a. the Crypto Beast. As you guys know by now, we like to get together, go through a couple of the headlines in the crypto news world, bring them to your attention, and then talk about them and see what you guys think about them. As always, we appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let us know how you're doing or if there's anything you'd like for us to add or take away. Uh, but before we get into the news today, just like we do every day, we've got to go over to the crypto beast, hit the daily market sentiment. I'm interested to see what the sentiment is uh, today because there's been a lot going on in the last two or three days. So uh, without further ado, crypto beast take over. I think that the crypto still has that whole uh, thing where it's really stuck to the economy and to, the, to stocks right at the moment. So it's not really getting that separation it needs. So I'm just waiting for that to slowly happen or the decouple and then I'll feel a little bit more bullish about it. But right now at the moment, I'm kind of like up in the air still. Yeah, man, I think it's still that that boring time. And I, I keep talking about it, no matter how much we see these prices move up or down, there's still no new volume uh, coming in and there's no massive volume leaving out. So uh, I think it's a good time to still just kind of like be sidelined and keep just keep watching for uh, new things to happen. But without further ado, we're going to jump right into the crypto news, guys. Today, I won't be sharing my screen, but I'll try to make it just as entertaining without it. Uh, but the first article is coming from Cointelegraph. The headline reads, Polygon's focus on building layer two infrastructure outweighs Maddox 50% drop from the all-time high. So after a devastating 50% correction between December the 25th and January the 25th, Matic has been struggling to sustain the $1.40 support. Uh, while some argue that this top 15 coin has merely adjusted after a 16,200% gain in 2021, others point to the uh, competing scaling solutions growth. So either way, Matic, rep re uh, Matic remains 50.8% uh, below its all-time high at an $11 billion market cap uh, capitalization. Currently, the market cap of Luna stands at $37 billion, Solana is at $26 billion, and AVAX is at $19 billion. A positive noted that Polygon raised $450 million on February 7th, and the funding round was backed by some of the blockchain's most considerable venture uh, funds, including Sequoia Capital. So Polygon offers scaling and infrastructure support to the EVM, decentralized apps or dApps, uh, but besides it is not plagued by the high transaction fees and network congestion that impact on the net, uh, Ethereum network. However, as a proof, uh, proof of stake layer one uh, emerged and offered low cost smart contract capabilities, it has vastly increased the competition for the Ethereum network, DeFi, NFTs, uh, marketplaces, crypto games, gambling, and social applications. Um, so uh, in, in Polygon's primary DApp metric started to display weakness in 20, 2021 after the, the TVL dropped below 4 billion um, Matic. So this is um, pretty interesting to see that, you know, even though, uh, you know, the price has been falling for Matic uh, since, I guess, between December and January and it fell 50%, uh, they're not having any like inkling of uh, saying that they're going to stop building or anything. Uh, they, they raised another $450 million. Uh, they've committed over a billion dollars for uh, complex D apps and, and things of that nature. Uh, so uh, Polygon is just one of those things that we, we keep hearing about a bunch of partnerships in the last two years. Uh, and, and, and you could tell that growth, I didn't even know it had grown that much over uh, the last year, you know, 16,000, uh, what was it? 16,200 percent in 2021 alone. So that was on a, that was 160 X for some people. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, regardless of how you look at it, I think Matt, it's one of those things that's here to stay. And um, you, you see the things that is compared to the AVAXs, the Lunas, and things of that nature. So definitely a great scaling, uh, layer two scaling solution. Yeah, for sure. And my first article is going to be on South Korea has a new president and he likes crypto. Uh, a conservative presidential contender has officially been elected as a new president of South Korea. According to news reports, Yoon of the People Power Party defeated his politically progressive opponent, Lee Jae-mung, by less than 1%. In South Korea's cryptocurrency dominated the election discord, with both candidates launching NFT con connections to their campaigns. They've acquired popularity among the younger, more crypto-enthusiastic public because of their pro-crypto viewpoints, which contrast with former president, Moon Jae Ban in stance on Bitcoin exchanges. Throughout his campaign, Yoon promised to deregulate the Bitcoin market. In January, he declared at a crypto conference, the rules far from reality and 
far from reality and absurd must be revised to realize the infinite potential of the virtual asset market. Uh, Yoon has declared a goal to recruit and build cryptocurrency unicorns or startup companies worth 1 billion or more. He is also committed to increase supply and capital gains tax level before it goes into force. So great move on South Korea's part to elect um, a cryptocurrency pro president. So uh, yeah, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, man, it's one of those things that we keep um, in the last couple of weeks, I, I feel like we've been hearing a little bit more about South Korea and how uh, they're starting to open up a little bit more to crypto because uh, it was it wasn't that long ago until uh, the maybe going back into the middle part of last year, they were saying that they were potentially thinking about getting rid of it, just like a, a lot of. Uh, Uh, just give me one second. He'll be right back. Um, I know that he isn't too far away. So just give me one second to wait for him and we'll redo it. Here he comes right now. There you go. It'll just be one more second, you guys. He's just hooking up his audio and then he'll be back again to continue from where we left off. All right, cool. I don't know if you want to start over, but it's all good. But no, I was just saying, like, uh, we've been hearing a lot about Korea uh, in the news lately, uh, you know, being more set than a cryptocurrency. Is, so to, to, to see that they picked this leader is just another good sign uh, going forward for Korea. And I'm looking forward to see what what, what more what other things they, they, they do with crypto uh, going forward. So the second article that I have today, Scott, is actually going to be coming from your favorite place. Uh, <laughs> it's about good tornado cash. <laughs> no, it's coming from Bloomberg. Uh, the headline reads, Crypto Mixer Tornado Cash doesn't plan to comply with sanctions. So one of the founders of Tornado Cash, amongst the most popular services uh, to obscure cryptocurrency transactions, said it does not need to comply with sanctions being imposed in the wake of Russia's attack on Ukraine. Designed uh, to preserve privacy, the protocol does this by breaking the link between the sender and the receiver's address on transactions sent over the Ethereum blockchain. The project is smart contract based, meaning that the decisions are made by the pre-written software program instead of individuals. It also doesn't provide any custodian services or have any centralized host or its website. Individuals can access Toner to Cash by using the Ethereum name service or ENS as distributed name system without any login information, which the co-founder says helps it makes it possible uh, impossible to police users. We don't have more access to it than uh, any others, um, said the uh, protocol or the founder. Uh, there's just not much to it. <laughs> Regulators may not see it the same way. According to the guidance from the Multination uh, Financial Ash Action Task Force, the protocol is likely or likely falls under provisions covering vir virtual asset service providers, legal observers said, uh, creators and individuals that maintain control or sufficient uh, influence in the application are likely to require to have compliance in certain places, including sanctions compliance, even uh, if the project is considered decentralized. So uh, kind of interesting here because, you know, Tornado Cash is always in the news and it's always something going on with Tornado Cash. Where somebody's using it as a scapegoat. Um, so to you just hear that they're not planning on comply with the, the sanctions and things of that nature. It's no surprise to me. Uh, they're, they're really standing up for what their, product, their protocol is and really breaking that link between who's sending who to what or sending what to who. So uh, I think this is one of those things that we'll definitely hear more about. It does seem like they they went on to say that if, if they, they did start uh, cracking down on, in certain uh, areas that they were thinking about something with KYC, um, or the ENS, you know, like that's your, that uh, ENS is kind of pretty much like a KYC. It gives your, uh, it gives your ENS name, uh, not exactly all your information, but still could give you a little bit of information, but definitely a, a cool article. Okay. And then my next article is this one. <clears throat> Turkey's economy minister met with citizens to discuss SHIB adoption. Uh, since hitting the 1 million, 1 million holder mark at the end of 2021, the SHIB ENU has gained approximately 200,000 new owners since the beginning of 2022, and the adoption of the meme coin is still increasing. Most recently, Deputy Chairman of the AK Party Group and Minister of Economy for Turkey, Mustafa Alidas, discussed the adoption of SHIB with Shino Inu uh, Turkey, a SHIB Army member from Turkey. In particular, 
Shiva Inu Turkey has a face-to-face -face discussion with officials from the Turkish parliament chaired by Mustafa Alitas, during which the SHIB ecosystem was addressed according to a tweet on March 9th by a lead SHIB, Shiba Inu developer, Shaitoshi Kusama. Um, the developer development occurred off the heels of rapid depreciation of Turkey's fiat currency. The Turkish lira in 2021 and 2022, which resulted in trading activity in Turkish lira pairing with Shiba Inu and Tether being more than five times higher than Bitcoin. Hmm? That doesn't make sense. Pairing with Shiba Inu like and Tether being more than five times higher than Bitcoin. Hmm. I don't I, I'm, I'm interested to see more on that uh, in the future. Because <laughs> uh, that, that sounds like a lot uh, to, you know, a lot of growth. So we'll, we'll see. We'll definitely pay a little bit more attention to that here in the near future. But to go over to my last article for the day, it's coming from Cointelegraph as well. The headline reads, GSR partners with Chainlink to integrate price data uh, for smart contracts. So crypto marketing firm GSR has partnered with Chainlink to contribute price data to uh, the the decentralized Oracle network is to be used within decentralized finance and smart contract applications, highlighting that the blockchain industry is moving forward to interoperability and more cross-chain capabilities. In an announcement, uh, Sergey Nazarov, the co-founder co of Chainlink, said that the highly quality, the high quality market data is vital to the growth of the multi-chain ecosystem. According to uh, Sergey, GSR is launching its data service and will enable the firm to access ever-growing blockchain economy and assist in the innovation of smart contracts. So Francisco Lopez, the GSR executive, also mentioned that the collaboration with Chainlink Labs will allow GSR to speed up the adoption of the trust minimized, uh, the trust minimized financial data products. According to Lopez, because Chainlink is uh, blockchain agnostic, GSR will have a future-proof bridge uh, that connects data to the blockchain. So this is going to be really cool. Uh, I think this is something to pay attention to uh we know that Chainlink has been really making some good moves in the last couple of uh, the last year especially uh but to see them partner with gsr um to to offer price data for contracts i think this is going to be cool it might be a little bit further than i i can get into today because it's not really a, a, a an in-depth article about it but uh you know it looks like they're going to be uh you know using this data to uh, offer uh, different solutions to DeFi and use smart contracts so uh, and to improve smart contracts. So looking forward to this and, and I, I've always been bullish on uh, Chainlink. So I think it, I think they'll be fine. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, my dog's being a little bit loud today and I do apologize for everyone. Uh, Vitalik Butrin asked court for leniency in upcoming sentencing of Virgil Griffith. The Ethereum co-founder letter letter paints a moving picture of his relationship with Griffith, his longtime friend and former collaborator who Butrin, uh, Butrin yeah, credits with shaping both his own worldview and the culture of the Ethereum Foundation. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Butrin has added his voice to the course of people asking for New York court for leniency in the upcoming sentence of former Ethereum developer Virgil Griffith. Griffith was arrested in November 2019 after giving a presentation on cryptocurrency and blockchain technology at North Korean crypto conference in April of that year. He was charged with violating U.S. sanction laws and in September 2021 pleaded guilty in an agreement with federal prosecutors that could see him serve up to 6.2 or 6.5 years in prison. In a letter to District Judge Kevin Castle of the South District of New York, Butrin detailed his seven-year friendship with Griffith, who he met in 2013 and began collaborating with on research in 2016. In 2018, Griffith formally joined Ethereum as a developer after Butrin said he convinced him to agree. Butrin wrote about Griffith's kind and peaceful nature, which also played heavily in many of the nearly 40 other letters written to Castle from Butrin's family, friends, and community members, including a homeless man Griffith met at Waffle House while on bail in Alabama in 2020. The man's letter to the court credits Griffith with helping him to get a GA GED and finding steady work as a barber. Virgil sees the good in everyone expects, except spiders. They make him jumpy, the man Eugene mm -hmm. Hayes wrote to Castle. That, that goodness Butrin wrote left a lasting legacy in the Ethereum Foundation and the wider community as well on Butrin himself. So that's awesome that the guy is really nice. I mean, I get 
like North Korea is kind of one of those spots that you should probably stay out of when it comes to cryptocurrency conferences, especially if you live in the United States, it might be different if you're from a different country, but definitely from the States, it does make it a little bit more difficult to go in a country like that and do presentations, just in my personal opinion, but yeah, it wants to help that. probably the people that are suffering there right now, right? So I get yeah, that. I can imagine getting off the stage and and getting locked up uh, at a crypto, crypto conference that would be that would be a, a sight to see right there yeah. um but without for, without further ado guys we're gonna go to the last part of the day we're going to take a look at the total crypto market cap and a couple of dominance factors that we like to look at right now the total crypto market cap is sitting at 1.726 uh, a little bit down from yesterday around eight percent uh the bitcoin dominance is at 43.32 uh, and the Ethereum dominance is at 18.11. So the ranges of the Ethereum, uh, the Ethereum dominance and the Bitcoin dominance has pretty much been the same like the last 30 days, still kind of in that little sideways pattern. Uh, so I'm not looking for any, you know, big growth in the next uh, in the next week at least. Uh, we'll just keep watching the market, but uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow, guys. That's all I have for today. Scott, you got anything else? No, I'm good. Thank you. Well, just like watch. Uh, what's going on with Big One? Come into our Twitter space. We'll have one tomorrow. It's Freestyle Friday. So definitely drop into the space. Come talk about your project. We'd love to hear about it. And yeah, go from there. Yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Have a great day, you guys. Peace. Bye for now.